Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we are here with a great guest from Google. He's a Google technologist. His name is uh, Daniel Seberg, and he's uh, had quite an interesting career in the tech industry and now in journalism too, for that matter. But now he is at Google, and he's going to talk to us about the uh, Google I.O. conference. And before we start, Daniel, what does a technologist do at Google? <laughs> Well, uh, it's one of the hats that I wear here at Google, and uh, really, it's an opportunity to talk about what we do as a company to consumers. And you know, it's it's uh, I, it's I get to geek out about this stuff as much as uh, folks like you and, and others do. So it's uh, it's it's a fun fun position. And what's neat about what Google's done, especially in the mobile industry at this point, is that uh, it's created a a real uh, platform for you know people that can get into it, like you know Android. I'm talking about, and and for that matter, Chrome OS. Um, but you also have the ability for people to really start getting into the nitty gritty of their hardware. And of course, this week is Google I.O., which is Google's big developer conference. And uh, what's been announced this, this time? Because last year there was a lot of stuff, right? So this year it's a, a little bit more on the techie side, would you say? Yeah, I suppose. And there are a lot of things, though, that, that are hopefully seen as practical and, and meant for consumers, too. So, um, you know, this is the eighth uh, annual I.O. conference. And you know, really aimed at developers and bring them together and hearing from us at Google and what we're focused on. And, you know, this year, the big emphasis is, is on mobile, um, as you say. And, you know, many of us carry around this little computer in our pockets. And so Android M, which is going to be coming out later this summer. Um, and that was one of the things that we really focused on and specifically some features within that. So addressing better battery life. This is something that, that many of us uh, have to deal with. So something called Doze, which um, will mean that if your phone is, is lying dormant on a, on a flat surface or it's stable for a while, um, then we'll really put it into kind of a deeper sleep and, and save you quite a bit of battery life. Um, Android Pay, which is a new way to be able to use or will be able to use your smartphone to pay for things um, in store or through apps, um, tie in your loyalty cards. Um, some, it's an evolution of Google Now. So if, if you know what Google Now is, you can see through cards, notifications, things you don't even have to search for. It's just you know weather information, sports scores, you've got a flight coming up. All of this comes in seamlessly. But with Google Now on tap, what you'll be able to do is, let's say you're listening to music in Spotify, you can actually hold the button down and you'll get additional information about the artist that you're listening to. So it's meant to give you the information you need in whatever context or whatever app that you're in. Um, and then we also wanted to address permissions. And so these days you download lots of apps, you agree to certain permissions. We wanted to make it easier for people to go back and change those, see what the permissions you set for all of the apps that are on your phone, and really make that as transparent as possible. So those are some of the features within Android M that we talked about. And that would obviously be a rollout over time over the next year, I guess, as to when people would actually get that on their on their phone, right? Yeah, Android M is, is coming later this summer. Um, and then, you know, of course, there'll be perhaps additional things announced uh, later on. But one of the things that we did talk about that's available today um, is the new Photos app. Um, so this is something that, that people have really been uh, talking about. And, you know, today, if, if you're like me, you take dozens if not hundreds or more pictures on your phone and you end up almost in this kind of death scroll when you right. want to show them to somebody or share them and so we've separated out the photos app um, as a standalone app for android and ios and you can now go in and see your pictures organized by location by different things events people um, you can search a keyword so if you've got a dog you can actually just search for pictures of your dog I'm and doing then you that can right choose now, and it's amazing it. how well that works. <laughs> I just typed in dog, and I've got every dog picture. Even dogs like weren't even looking at the camera were popping up on my camera roll, so it's pretty smart. Right. It's, it, 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 it is. It, it, it's almost uh, what I found playing around with it is it's almost, uh, you know, you get to reconnect with some of the, the, the pictures you might have forgotten about, and you go back and look at them, and you might feel like you want to share them. And uh, um, it's, it's, uh, it's also, I mean, it's, we're seeing that you know, trillions and trillions of photos have already been shared, and another trillion this year alone. Um, that people are going to have or have taken on their device, um, so we want to be able to to help with that. And it's unlimited storage um, for for high res images and, and videos, so 16 megapixel and then 1080. And that's what was interesting too about the photos component. And that's, that was part of Google Plus. It's been and it's been changed a little bit. It's still um, you know those photos are still going to be available in Google Plus. But what I what I found most interesting was that uh, Google makes things available to the iOS platform in addition to the Android platform, which is something that doesn't happen the other way around. Uh, what what is the uh, the reasoning behind Google still providing apps for the competing platform? Is it because of the number of users that's available? Is it just a company philosophy? Yeah, I mean, I guess it's a bit of both. I mean, we certainly want to have make these apps available to as many people as possible, no matter what 
device that they're using. Um, so if it's Google Maps, if it's YouTube, um, if it's photos, all of those things we want to have, you know, in the hands of, of, you know, whatever device that you're using, we want people to be able to have access to it. Um, and, you know, that's, that's something we've thought a lot about, particularly with photos, because, of course, people you know, use their smartphones to take pictures. And you mentioned the separation of Google Plus. And, you know, we, I think we've learned from Google Plus that, you know, pictures, what's one place where people might share them. But this experience with the Photos app is meant to be more private um, in the beginning. It's up to you if you, if you want to share any of these pictures. It's stuff that only you can see. Um, and then we make the option available if you want to share it across different social media. And I just like having it too because it's just another backup that I can have for my camera roll because I, I know my, my, I just went through something. I go through with my family. I'm the guy that everybody comes to when their phone fills up, right? <laughs> so um, having a safe place where you know your photos are living in their full resolution it means you can start freeing up some space on your phone and not have to uh, worry too much about where those things go. Where, where do you see the yeah, platform that's, going that's in the coming years? On more than one occasion, my wife will have, she'll be out to take a picture of something and then it will say that her phone is is full and you know she couldn't take any more pictures it gets so frustrated she goes in front of delete a bunch of them and of course the moment is lost of whatever that you were trying to take a picture of so right you want to have the free memory <laughs> and and on android yeah. does it behave a little bit differently on android than it does on ios or is it pretty much the same application it's it's pretty much the same experience um across both and you'll see you know that there's a uh, you know ways to organize your pictures and it's done very intuitively um you know with location it's not something you have to go tag the picture with the location or something um, and so that, that part of it is meant to be very seamless. And I guess that's what Google kind of brings to the table here is that you have, you know, with Google Now, I use Google Now quite a bit. It's sometimes creepy, but it's actually very useful in, how, <laughs> it's, uh, in the fact that it is able to kind of predict what I'm looking for. Um, so I'm, I'm guessing that in the photo sense here, we've got a lot of uh, points coming in, search points, I guess, uh, you know, the, the, what's in the photograph, the faces in the photograph, um, the location, maybe any keywords you assign to it. So it's doing all of this, this stuff to make it a, a more searchable presence. And I think that's been the big thing with Google is uh, you know, differentiating the need to organize yourself versus having uh, some kind of search engine available. Do you, do you see consumer adoption on this? I'm often, I'm in an office where I'm, I'm split between uh, younger folks and, and some older folks and we're, we're pushing them over to Google Docs and it's been a bit of an of a uphill battle with some of the older folks because they're not used to having to not organize things. Is that something Google's looking at? Yeah, I mean, you know, the, 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 the uh, Google's mission is to organize the world's information, make it universal and accessible. And this, you know, is accessible and useful. And this is the kind of thing that is, is very much in line with that. Um, if you think about, you know, photos as almost being, you know, not unlike email in that you've now got so many photos that you want to be able to access them in a way that makes sense. You know, why should the onus be on us to kind of scroll through and, you know, find all this stuff? You know, you can create folders for your email, you should be able to create, you know, the same type of experience in a way for photos that it's, you know, easy to find them. And because otherwise, you know, we take all these pictures and, and, and photos on our phones and what happens to them? They end up just sitting there. Or we, we, you know, we, we might share like 5% of the pictures we take just because we don't have the ability to go back and find them. So hopefully it is making people's lives easier. And I, I personally have gone through it recently and actually to be honest, it was a little bit of a, almost an emotional experience because, you know, you go back and you see pictures you've forgotten about and I see the ones of my kids and I can go back and it's like, oh gosh, that was from a few years ago and I can go, you know, you rediscover some of these images in a, in a neat way. Yeah, that's what I, I've been doing on mine because I've been backing up my photos through the Google Plus app for the last three years or however long it's been and I found so much stuff yesterday just you know, fl flipping through the app. I was like, wow, I can't believe that my daughter was so little. <laughs> so it's been, uh, it's been really neat doing that. And there were some other things too at Google I.O. Um, cardboard is, I guess people just kind of looked at that like, okay, it's kind of like a viewfinder. I have one downstairs and it's pretty cool. But uh, tell us where cardboard is going because it seems like this is kind of developing into something more than just a, a little G whiz kind of thing with a piece of cardboard. Right. Yeah, it certainly is. So, I mean, last year at, at, at I.O., we we unveiled what cardboard is and, and you can see it here for people who, who aren't familiar. And, you know, it's it is made of cardboard. You slide your phone in. There are a couple of lenses here and you get this immersive stereoscopic experience with with video and animation and, and all kinds of things. And there are lots of apps. And we've announced now that there are more than a million of these that are out there. And folks are thinking of all sorts of ways to, to connect with people with this very low cost entry into VR. And, one of those ways is through um, Google Expeditions, and this is something that we, we talked about. And so we're getting these into the hands of teachers and schools and, and of course, by extension to students. So you can imagine a teacher's up at the front of the class. They give these out to the, to the students, and then you can take the kids on this virtual expedition to, let's say, the Great Wall of China, 
And, and when you see how kids react to this, it's, it's really quite special. They, you know, they, they, they get it right away. Um, it's a new way of learning and kind of exposing them to different places. Um, and so that's, that's one of the things that, that we're thinking about. But, you know, as you say, this, this really is sort of taking off um, and, and we're seeing all sorts of use cases for it. And it kind of speaks to the whole ethos around I.O., which is you, you give a, a developer something, you know, that you have to kind of work with or around to some extent. I mean, there's limitations with having to hold it up to your heads. We're already seeing now they've got these things you can strap on. And um, but, you know, it's just been amazing to kind of see how people reacted to something so simple, which really is some plastic and some cardboard that you fold together into something uh, useful. And it's and it's actually a pretty compelling experience. Uh, you know, I was surprised I looked at. Uh, you have like a photo tour, I think, of, uh, of an art gallery or something or a, a former palace. And I was uh, just amazed by just how good the experience is with something really inexpensive. So I guess there's some rig now that you're going to be able to buy or, or 3D print uh, involving GoPros also to kind of help develop this experience further. Yeah, so that, that's also so jump is um, is what we talked about um, as well at, at Google I.O. And this is um, it's, it's an array of, of GoPro cameras. We partnered with GoPro. And the, the idea is that we've done some of the thinking around the geometry and the way that these cameras are meant to be aligned to accurately collect this immersive 3D imagery. And it's, you know, in, in the hands already of, you know, people thinking about filmmaking and, you know, entertainment or sports and, you know, even just everyday life. How do, how do you kind of use this? And the videos can be shared on, on YouTube. And so that's, that's also a, a sort of an, you know, an evolution of, of this and people thinking about how to get into VR and, I think you really touched on an important point, and that is that often, you know, at I.O., we see, you know, developers with just like light bulbs going on with all sorts of things. They want to take this and run with it in different directions. And so we, as much as we come to I.O. with, you know, here's what Google's working on and here's what we're thinking about. Um, it's also an opportunity for us to listen to the developer community and, and just to see what's inspiring them and where they're going to take it. And what was interesting too about this year is that, you know, last year, I was just going kind of doing a comparative here. Last year we had Lollipop. I think the material design was introduced. Uh, Android TV, Android Wear, there was a lot, Google apps on, on, or Android apps on the Chromebooks too. There was a lot of stuff that uh, got out there. This year it seems like it's more of a refinement year. Am I right in saying that? I mean, are you, are you doing like the Intel TikTok thing where uh, you want to put all this stuff out there, see how people work with it and then refine it in the, in the next year? Is that the strategy? Um, I would say last year the big emphasis was on the, the connectedness of all of these things. So as you say, Android Auto, Android Wear, um, you know, how, how all of this fit together. And I think this year the emphasis is really just is on mobile and, you know, to, to a certain degree within that, you know, VR, but all the kind of subset of mobile. So whether it's mobile payments or mobile notifications, apps, um, Android Wear, all of that sort of ecosystem within mobile. Um, and 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 photos even, I mean, all of this is, is kind of an extension of that as, a, as an overarching thing. So it's a kind of a, th a theme that, you, that you've, you've looked at needing the attention this year, which is the mobile side of, of the equation. And uh, there's certainly a lot of stuff that's coming down the line. I think a lot of the things from uh, last year are still making, especially like the Android TV devices, we're seeing the, the NVIDIA Shield coming out this week. So there's a lot of uh, things that I, I think the hardware side is, is catching up with too as uh, things are, are rolling along here. So there is quite a bit on the horizon. What else is uh, new for Google uh, coming up in the next year beyond what was announced this week? Or is it more just uh, keep getting all this stuff out there into developers' hands? Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of getting this stuff out into developers' hands. I mean, I think that something like Jump is going to really get people thinking about, you know, what's next. And, you know, the, the big thing for us with, with VR at this point is, you know, how do we get this into as many people's hands as possible and make it, you know, accessible? So, Yes, I mean, of course, there are just practical things to think about in terms of how you hold it and wear it and, and that kind of thing. But, you know, really, really thinking about, you know, just making it a universal experience for people who want to have access to it and doing it in a way that makes sense, too. You know, that it's, it, yes, there's sort of the entertainment and, and the sports and the fun gee whiz side. But, you know, with something like Google Expeditions, really about learning and education and, you know, how can this be used in a way that's, that's really beneficial to people in a larger sense too. And it's certainly a lot less expensive to buy a couple of $10 cardboard fold-up things than it is to buy a VR headset that might cost a couple hundred dollars plus all the hardware you have to tether it to it. So uh, the experience There's on cardboard awesome. is really good. So that's, that's really yeah. neat. Well, Daniel, I want to thank you for joining us today. It's been great to have you. And uh, where can people find more about what's going on at IO and some of the ways if they're interested in developing themselves, how can they maybe connect with uh, Google if they can't make it to the conference? Are there ways that they can watch remotely? Yeah, so google.com slash IO, um, you can go there, you can watch the keynote. 
Um, you can see some of the talks that are happening, some of the announcements, see some of the videos about the products. Um, and then hashtag IO15 or IO2015 um, if you want to follow along on, on social media, lots of stuff out there. Terrific. And I guess you can download all the SDKs and everything. So if you wanted to start developing, you could just go and grab this software for free and get at it, right? Yeah, yeah. In the developer space, I mean, there's just tons out there for people to be getting their hands on already. So, yeah. Terrific. Well, Daniel, thank you very much for joining us today. And this is Lon Sybin. Thanks for watching.